So anyway, entire activity and program which I'm involved in is about multidisciplinarity, which actually leads to the convergence. What we are trying to do is trying to encourage number of nanotechnology concepts drive towards applications in cancer, both in diagnostics and therapy, and eventually also in prevention. So as a, as a result, we are bringing together people from very different disciplines. Most of the technological innovation comes from physical scientists, material scientists, engineers. But the application of, of those fields into the cancer comes from cancer biologists and also oncologists who ultimately will drive the application. And if you look at the different stages of blending <coughs> all these scientists together, first of all, it was about forming a common language. And of course, that really not entirely happened yet. But we see a fair amount of progression in that. But second, se second step is cross-learning across the boundaries. And eventually seeing that biologists can contribute to innovation in nanotechnology. And at the same time, technologists and physicists and chemists can start understanding biology well enough that they can critically look at that and at the same time uh, uh, present or suggest new solutions there. So, so in a way, which, watching the whole process is really fascinating because from, and everybody probably talks about that, individual stovepipes, you gradually see how people start communicate across the boundaries and eventually boundaries gradually disappear. So converging different fields eventually will produce knowledge which will go beyond each of the fields. If I look at individual fields, often they saturate. The innovation level uh, still goes on, but the slope of the innovation slows down. If you now converge a number of different disciplines, you would think that the working along the interfaces and along boundaries of these disciplines will eventually promote further innovation, promote productivity, so in a way, it will accelerate uh, the development of science and, uh, and technology and accelerate innovation within them. Now, in terms of examples of applications, so I would, I would give you two. One is development of new therapeutics or new treatments uh, for cancer. <clears throat> so the major problem with current treatments is that they have very severe side effects. Some people actually give up their uh, chemotherapeutic treatment because of how severe the side effects are, even they know that ultimately they may lead to, uh, to shortening their, their life. Um, so what nanotechnology potentially can do is to learn or <coughs> how to deliver drugs more locally. Uh, so at that <coughs> because of that, it will potentially produce better efficacy, meaning better effectiveness of the, of the treatment. But because of the treatment localization, uh, it, can, uh, it should reduce side effects. And at the same time, because of new uh, diagnostics and monitoring techniques, some of these treatments should become more personalized, meaning that looking at an individual patient, you can stratify the treatment. And as such, because of stratification to the individual, you will make it more effective. So, in a way, that really leverages a lot of innovation in developing new carriers, which allow you to carry uh, the drug, <coughs> and then building it in such a way that it's targeted. So again, you, you, you improve the localization and, and uh, eventually the treatment. The other thing is building new devices which will allow you to perform uh, more specific and more sensitive diagnosis and also monitoring of the effectiveness of the therapy during the treatment of the patient. And uh, these are devices which combine a lot of very s sensitive sensors with microfluidic and nanofluidic devices. They are capable of monitoring number of different biological signatures, so it's not only test for one protein or uh, for one specific hybridization event, but for several of them, and we know that cancer is complex enough that it's usually characterized by a number of different signatures. And at the same time, <coughs> these devices can process very small volumes of bodily fluids without additional sample preparation. So the turnaround of the diagnosis can be much quicker and the uh, sample doesn't have to travel to 
uh, dedicated lab, but it can be done uh, by the patient bedside. Well, so the so first obstacle is uh, having people being interested in it, mm -hmm. because often, and especially that happens in academia, when they work within their own uh, specialization and field, mm -hmm. they may not even know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. And I and uh, now I think that's happening more and more. A lot of universities are forming interdisciplinary institutes, which actually allow people initially just to have conversations, and then they start learning that there will be a lot of benefits from the cross fertilization across the uh, boundaries of the field. Once the knowledge or awareness <coughs> uh, is brought to the table, then the next step is learning the common language. Uh, and that may be at times harder than one would think. The training in different discipline of science and technology is very different. People think differently, analyze things differently. Uh, so, so learning the common language at times is becoming difficult or is difficult, but especially among younger scientists, who now also often work with uh, advisors from different disciplines, that seems to be more natural. Uh, so again, eventually that can be overcome. Often when you build teams and they, you build them for certain longevity and people work uh, together for more than two or three years uh, and do it routinely, then eventually uh, these synergies are, are built quite well. And of course the last uh, obstacle is, <coughs> since most of that interdisciplinary or, or convergent work, at least at the cutting edge of innovation, is occurring at the universities, uh, the question is sustainable funding which will allow to maintain the teams which work together mm -hmm. for uh, duration of time which will warrant the, the, the success. But I think all these things can be, can be overcome and just require time to, to reach reach success at the end.